Oh, good. Here we go. So today is our corrective and glamour day. And we're going to first go through and make sure everybody has exactly what they need for their kit and that their kit has come complete. Occasionally, we have some things missing. And the only way to do this is to go through it one thing at a time. Now I have to go get scissors. So scissors are part of your kit, right? Everyone should have a small bag that has at least three pieces of braided crepe hair, right? Hold those up. And there you go. I don't think I put mine out. Oh, I'm such a bore running around like this. So you should have at least three pieces. If I, uh, I think Ellie and Brindley, because you're together, I gave four in case you need to trade between you. All right, it looks like this. This is crepe hair. You should have three pieces. If you have a small piece, three inches gives you at least six to nine inches. And they should be in relationship to your hair color. So I would actually probably use a gray blend because my hair is gray, getting gray. And it also for people who don't have gray hair, it can be a way to put in a little bit of highlight without just doing blonde. So I've tried to guess at your hair colors. And if you feel like you're completely off base, let me know. In that baggie also, you should have a wig cap. All right, remember a wig cap is the thing that really helps support your hair and control it. And at the very end of this, we'll practice putting them on so that you can do your corrective makeup and not have any uh, masking of your face and you actually just see your entire face without the distraction of your hair. So now you have your makeup kit either all the way out of your box or you're going to take it out of your box as we go through things. The first thing you have is a powder puff and this is going to use be very handy in using your loose powder. We saw Dana use that very successfully with his loose powder. So I'll get my loose powder out next. You should have a fair translucent, most of you, and that goes with your particular skin tone. You will have a small bottle of liquid latex, a small bottle of blood, a bottle of hair color. And this is, we'll be using this for a couple of different things, but you may want to particularly use it for middle-aged. You have a small bottle of spirit gum and spirit gum remover. How are we doing so far? Excellent. Good. Good. A container of nose and scar wax. And just take a moment and open that up. And it's very, it's pretty uh, soft, but this is things we use to add three dimensional features to our face. Originally this was um, nose putty. And that's what morticians use to help fill in the hollows of the face uh, when you're after you've died to give your face a more natural appearance from sunkenness. Okay, let's go to our brushes and pencils. You should have three pencils that are somewhat color coded to your skin tone. So you'll have a possibly a plum rose that would your red tone would be your lip color. An eyebrow pencil, which would be your taupe, could also be eyeliner. Any of these can work in brow, eye, or mouth. They can work on your face, they can do everything. I'm just identifying them in the most possible, uh, the most obvious way. And then your black pencil or dark brown, 
for eyeliner. And we use all these things for effects. They come sharpened. But one of the things that you have on your supplies list is a pencil sharpener. So you'll want to make sure that you have that. And one of the hints we got on the video last week was if your pencils are not sharpening, pop them in the freezer for five minutes and then the, that will harden up the lead because these are soft pencils. You have two brushes. Okay, and here I'll take this one out of the case. Two brushes. A number seven, which is the bigger one, and a three. We'll use them both and a lot because you'll definitely want to use both so that you don't contaminate color. And that's one of the most important things that we'll remember. You have a eyebrow and eyelash brush comb combo. In addition, you should have on your supplies list a, this is not part of your kit, but in addition, you should have a toothbrush which is something very handy and we'll use to brush eyebrows. We can use it to brush a lot of things, but you should have a toothbrush. If you have a used one at home, simply boil water, put the head of it in the boiling water. It will loosen up anything and sanitize. So do have one. You have a rouge or powder brush in a nice little plastic sleeve, which helps the bristles stay very nice and, and all one direction. A group of very nice um, cotton swabs with a very pointed end. And this gives you some good detail work. So that's very nice. A brick of sponges. And this gives you uh, eight, eight good wedges. Of course, you can buy wedges at the store. Another kind of sponge we have is this black reticulated nylon sponge. This is called a stipple sponge. It's used to provide texture on the face. In the small containers, in, in value order, you have a white, and it says white on the back. CL-1, it's the highest, it's the it's the lightest value of our cream liner. CL is cream liner dash one. So number one is the lightest value. Then we have highlight, cream highlight, ultralight or light. This is CH, cream highlight zero. Character shadow three, which is CS three. And you unscrew these and screw them back on. And then you have a dry rouge, which is called powder blush, but you can see it's dry, it's not cream. There is a dryness to it. You can see it comes off like it's pressed powder. Your color is color matched to your kit. Then we go to our foundations. So you'll have three cream foundations. So make sure you have all three. You have a light. I'll take the lids off so you can see I have a light, a medium, and a dark. Again, they screw off this way. So make sure that they do screw off as I'm saying that. Sometimes they can get stuck. So you just have to work it. Isn't it good for me to have to do this in front of you? <laughs> I got a brand new kit just so I could try everything. Okay, I'm gonna have to be working on that. I will too. 
Did anyone else have that problem? To opening it? I have that problem with my blush. I can't oh. open it. Yeah, just keep working on it. You'll you'll get it open. Yeah. I'll have my dad help me. <laughs> yes, enlist those muscles. <laughs> so you can see with the lid off, you can see the colors more um, clearly. So this is my light and this is my dark. And this is my medium. It's actually a redder tone. This is natural beige, Beak EK3, ultra beige, P42, which is a great color, and L2 light beige. A little, a little pink for me, but this isn't my kit. I'm just, I'm just demoing out of this kit for you. Okay. And what else is left? You should either have something still left in your kit or something left on your table. Can you identify what those are? Quad colors, right? So if you look on the back of this one, they are indicated, okay? The colors are indicated. CL11 is this cinnamon. LCS, lip color, lip color five natural, or you might have seven. Uh, here's a CR cream rouge two. So you have a dry rouge and a cream rouge. And then you have CL29 black. So if CL1 is white and CL29 is black, everything else falls in between those two values, okay? Your other quad, inconveniently, does not have the colors listed on it, okay? But they are on your site. I have, when in the makeup uh, kit, they are listed on your site, so we'll look at these. This one is mellow yellow, and let me get to the site so I can give you the exact number. Misty Violet. Uh, mar this is Misty Violet, Maroon, and Fresh Cut. So let me give you those numbers. So if you orient your, your bruise and abrasion wheel so it looks like mine, then you can do a plus sign on the back and you can write down the numbers so that you know which one, which colors these are, okay? Does that make sense to you? So if we look at this, I want to get to the whole supplies thing. Okay. So if you look at, you've got your, your plus marked on the back with your Sharpie, right? Like this. So your, your yellow is CL6, cream liner six, goldenrod. The redder of the two is CL131, fresh cut. CR17, misty violet. And CL15, maroon. Okay. Do you have those listed? Can you repeat please the last two? Sure. So you, you've drawn, I'm not gonna do it because this is brand new, but you're gonna draw an X on the back right here to match this X that you see on the front, right? So the yellow is goldenrod CL6. The red is CL131, fresh cut. The kind of really uh, gray purple that almost looks black, but it's not, is CR Cream Rouge 17 and Cream Liner 15 Maroon is the redder one right here, right? So if you've drawn your X, 
then it goes 15, 17, 131, and 6. Okay, questions. Does everyone have everything in their kit just to make sure no one's missing anything? And that's one good reason why we do that. So when you are working today, the most, one of the more important things that you want to establish is look, oh, sorry, you guys, you almost let me forget. Get out your wig cap and let's put them on. So if you have really long hair, you may need to do a, a ponytail. I've become pretty adept at just kind of haranguing my hair and I, and I don't have a lot of hair, so I just sort of fling it on. I start at the back, holding my hair, holding my fingers up over the front, and then pulling it down so that we have maximum face. And you can see, even though I am not naked face, I have makeup on, but it is a very different image than when you have hair. Hair is incredibly distracting. This, this really takes you out of who you are and what you're used to looking at in the mirror. And you're ready then to create a new character. Okay, so that's one advantage of, it gives you a nice line around the face and by the way, if, you're, if your um, hair is sticking out and it's your fingers too bulky, you can just do a pencil and pull it down and get that hair right in there, okay? So you wanna create as much face as possible and then you end up with that nice smooth line. And that's why when we did our face shape, you can really tell what your face shape is once you see this whole line exposed. So you wanna look at your face first. Hopefully by now you have done, you've looked at the uh, sequence of application that we have published on our, on our uh, modules. And the first thing that you wanna do is make sure that you have prepared your skin appropriately. And that's when we went into our breakout rooms last time, we talked about how to prepare your skin so you examine your face and then your skin, cleanse your face. It should, you should start class with it that way to make sure that you don't push grime in. I mean, that's one of the things, if you suffer breakouts, you're pushing grime in or other things have to come out. So what you wanna do is cleanse and then moisturize. Make sure that your, your skin is restored, okay? Then I generally use concealer. I have dark blotches, or if you have any other imperfections that you need to work on, you wanna put those on first before you apply your foundation. So go ahead and do that process. And meanwhile, what you're doing is you are studying this in relationship to your worksheet, to your schematic that you've drawn up. Sorry, the chair of the department's trying to call me. I'm gonna text her. She doesn't know I'm in class. Okay, so now you're, you're clean, you're moisturized, you're looking at all your flaws and you've placed your concealer. How are you gonna do that? You want to dab it on. You can use your sponge and you can dab it on. By the way, you are free to use any other things that you want in terms of, you, of personal makeup that you may have. And so you'll want to, I generally always have to 
uh, correct under my eye and correct above my eye because I have very deep sunk eyes and I generally have eye bags major. Okay, so I do that first. Then I take the foundation that is the closest match that I liked. I rub that on, power up your sponge. Note that your sponge has two sides. You, everyone pulled your sponge apart. You have a smooth side and a slightly rougher side. Can you see that? Where it's pulled apart, it's rougher. The face, which creates the rectangle, is smoother. That's what you want to apply with now. There are times when we'll actually pull them apart. There's times when you want to use the rougher side. There's times when you want to use the edge, okay? So let's put your makeup on by really getting a good layer of makeup on your sponge, dotting it around the face, and then you're connecting the dots together so that you're not stretching the face out of shape, okay? And then take a look at your, uh, I'm just gonna give you some time to catch up. And then you can start and go on to highlight and shadow contour. I'm gonna check on the other class and I'll be back in just a few minutes. Any questions before I go? Okay, uh, let me give you 10 minutes to at least get this part going, the, all the corrective stuff so you get a really nice smooth mask and you get your highlight, your highlight and shadows for contouring happening, okay? Then you, we'll start working on additions like, then you'll probably want a powder and I'll give you a powder demo. I know Dana's really hilarious when he powders, so I'll give you one. Okay, let me check in with everybody. You should definitely be well on your way to your correctives. And I will start pinning and taking a look at each person so that you can have your good corrective so that you're almost in in 10 minutes I want you to be to the point where you're ready to take your selfie okay because tell me when I come in to visit you in your room I want you to tell me those things you feel you are correcting show me your worksheet and then what you think you have left okay and I'm going to just I'll just go to I'll just throw somebody in a room and ask you to join. I'm gonna do have two rooms at a time. So let's see. Anastasia, I'm gonna have you go to room two. How you doing? Great, let me pin you, I'll unpin me. There we go. Nice, You. I think you might be muted. Good. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So what I, uh, what I did, uh -huh. I, so, so I should tell you what I used and what I did, right? Just, uh, yeah, or just, yeah, what did you feel like you wanted to correct? Tyler, you're up next. So I have uh, darker circles around my eyes. So I used the um, cream highlight to cover it. This one. Yep, exactly. I know. And then I used the brightest tone to cover my like whole face to make it smooth and one tone. And then because I have these heavy, um, how would you call it, cheeks? No. Yeah. Yeah, so I highlighted and I used the darkest uh, color of this three. Uh -huh. Of the foundation. Uh, yeah, to, to make it more like, a, not that sharp. And I had the same here, like corners on my forehead. So I, I, I hide it by using this darker color. And I also um, highlighted a little bit my cheeks to make it look nice. 
more and obvious. I, and I used um, the darker color to make my nose a little bit smaller. Right. Yeah. Very good. So you've used the excellent principles of highlight and shadow, which is highlight brings things forward. Yeah. And uh, shadow helps things recede. So if I want to not be so sharp here, slight mm -hmm. shadow puts that just goes from light to darker and it smooths mm -hmm. it away. So very, very good. Mm -hmm. So now you're ready to just touch up your brows, eyes and lips a little bit of, okay. did you powder? No, no, you told us to oh, wait. Okay. Yeah, so you know what, we're gonna powder. I'm gonna, let's see where, um, Tyler, if Tyler's still here. Okay, and then we'll go back and I'll show how to powder. So Tyler, start your video. There you go. I'm gonna pin you and we'll see how you're doing. There we go. You're, I think you're muted. Now I hear you. Yep. Ah, there we go. So did you get your kid on Saturday? I do have my kid with me. Um, all I've done at the moment, just I, I got here about 1.30. Yeah. I've done at the moment to go through. Um, Anastasia helped me out, um, figuring out just the, the basis, just get your face cleaned, make sure you're good to go there. Right. Uh, and then go through one of the uh, one of the foundations. So. Right. Uh, it's on the makeup application sequence page. So mm -hmm. we'll review that. I have that uh, okay. currently. And so you've got a, did you apply a foundation to your face? Yes. Uh, at the moment, I, I went with the toss up between olive tan and natural fair. So I think next time I'll try natural, but I have olive tan and I went through. Good. Um, Putting it on this way. Uh, yes. And then smoothing it in place. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, the only thing I didn't touch, which is a, another thing that Anastasia mentioned, was uh, the eyes. I as well have the dark yeah. circles in mm -hmm. the eyes. I didn't go through the foundation and touch up those areas, just because. Yeah, for that you'd want to use your um, you'd want to use your cream highlight. Highlight. Yeah, not the white, but the extra light. Gotcha. Or ultra. Yep, ultra light. Ultra light, and then you can put that on. Mm -hmm. You can also put that on with a brush. With, uh, okay. So that you you put that uh, into your uh, of course it's always the last one you pick up, right? <laughs> so you can power up your brush by using the flat side and running it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, flatten it because it's kind of stiff. So you want to make sure you get the stiffness off, right? Oh, okay. And then you can literally put it exactly where you want it. And you want to do that daubing method, not dragging, okay? So. And generally in the area of the eye, you work from the outside to the inside. Got okay? it. Uh, and right. then, um, well, I don't have uh, a sheet to go off of at the moment. I'm, um, two other things that I noticed were around the areas where I have like stubble, uh -huh. I've got a bit of redness. And uh -huh. then um, I have the dark circles under my eyes, but just above my eyes um, in the socket areas, I have like these little like purple lines. Just right, so you wanna do your cream highlight here as well. I do mine, I do it from here to here and all through the lid to neutralize all of that. Mm. I'll do, I'll come with no makeup on next time to do thin face. So you'll see what I look like. And then I'm going to do make extremes. So, okay. Yeah. It's just a way, this is exploring for you, particularly a brand new technique, new materials, new tools. It's like hand eye coordination, mm. you know? So that's what it's about. And I, I'm currently just at my, I'm in my brother's room right now at my dad's. That's why I was late. I had to check my my dad's dogs. So I'm going back and forth between the bathroom for, for the mirror. But okay. normally I do have an actual little mirror with me. Yeah, that's okay. Last minute thing. Understand. <laughs> All right.
So you guys head back to the main room. We're going to talk about powdering. Thank you. One of the great things about this makeup is that you can powder any time and you can powder multiple times. So it's not, um, it's not heavy. You can put it on very lightly. It can be very sheer. And for powdering, this is my powder brush, bigger, my puff and my powder. Now I don't, put my powder on my puff like this. I like to put it on a paper towel. Or onto a, even just a piece of paper. So that I can get a lot of loose and very fine powder. And I, I apply it there. And then I use my puff to pick the powder up and then I can blend it together. Okay, and then I'm not getting dots of powder on me. Okay, and then when you are applying the powder and you can do this after you do your contour, after you do your foundation, you can do it in between those if you tend to have a sweatier face, then I can powder I'm going to do one side and I can use my brush to remove any additional powder. So you're not going to be over powdered. Okay. And particularly those of you who have done theatrical performances or you have performed even with zoom, you know that there's a lot of perspiration that happens. And when we do a performance and we have to, we make a commercial at Santa Barbara City College, we make a commercial for each of the main stage shows. And we are literally three people standing off camera with powder puffs at all times, just because you, the heat, the amount of, of illumines coming down from the theater lights really heat up your skin and then that will create perspiration. So everyone should just stop and powder. And then we'll go forward and finish your eyebrows, your eyes, and your lips. And do a little bit of rouge. Take your selfie. Because then we'll go to glamour. I'm going to pause the recording for a minute since if you're finished and you would like to reveal where you are with your uh, corrective, we'd love to see it and then have you take your selfie. You can do that off camera. Anybody? Did you just disappear? I'm you're finishing up right now. I'm just going to need like two more minutes for me. Okay. Tyler, how about you? Uh, I'm currently working on the eyebrows right now. I don't think there's too much I really need to do with the eyebrows. Maybe just brush them with your brush. Shape them. So I've the done... Brush up and get the comb and take the comb and shape them over the top. You can go like gotcha. this, brush, 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 and then the comb will shape them for you. More upwards then. Oh, it just depends on, you know, the relationship. Just let me look at you for a sec. I'm trying to get a little... Oh, I can pin you. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So turn your face slightly sides. There you go. You have a little better light. Yeah, I think just brushing them. Generally, I like to brush up to give a little more room between the eye and the iris and the brow. And okay. then you can just shape them to the side. And if you saw the video, uh, you saw that uh, Dana used a toothbrush for that. Oh, One of my right. favorite little tools. Hmm. The, the video is on both the corrective page and on the lecture from last last week. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So we did a men's corrective. So you can take a look at that. Hmm. That was for you. That was the, the previous course. That yeah. was the last thing we watched. Yeah. Gotcha. 
So right. that might be a refresher for you. Okay. Gotcha. And I'm going to just pause for a sec. And anybody who. The reason why the toothbrush is so great is because I can get underneath the brow and brush up like this. Okay. And brush up. And then I can brush slightly over. And I'm not pressing this to my head. I'm just barely, here you can see the side, I'm just barely touching the hairs, okay? Now I have painted my brows because I have almost no brows. So I have put color on them first. And then I've used this to move the color around. You have the fortunate, uh, it, you have the fortunate experience of having enough brow. Also your brow, starts here at the edge of the nose. If we look at the classic shape, at 45 it has, or at 60 it has the arch, and then it ends at 45. So I bring my brows down, and I don't actually really have any brows there. I have like three hairs on each side. So it's just all pretend, <laughs> right? But the idea is lift it up, not don't flatten it to your face because we wanna create that three-dimensionality. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. That is unless you're using the Instagram eyebrow, which is really a plastered down eyebrow and truly shaped where you're drawing a shaped eyebrow on top of your brow. I'm talking about a natural corrective brow. If you're doing an Instagram eyebrow, you're not doing a natural brow. You are doing a painted on brow intentionally to look painted on, which is a very contemporary and fashionable look. Absolutely nothing wrong with it, but just know that that's your choice. Generally not as common for men. Some men do do that. Typically men do the more natural brow. Women choose whether or not they want to do the, the painted brow for everyday look, or they want to do a natural brow. Either one is very acceptable. And then sometimes they'll actually go through and tattoo that just to make it simpler, don't they? Uh, that... So tattooing is a whole nother thing to bring up, tattooing the makeup on. And when you tattoo something like a brow line that is that specific, unfortunately, you could never change it. Hmm. So generally to tattoo, they would be filling in or a lot of times it's an eyeliner tattoo, which the tattoo here or lip liner tattoo. So lip liner, by the way, when you're doing your lips, you want to bring the lip liner down from the bow to the center and then from the bow to the edge on the top. Now I have, my lips disappear right here. So I make sure that I draw on the top of the red line between the red pigmented lip part and the face part. Then from the bottom, I would go from the corner to the lower piece. And I can do that by looking in my mirror because I have a mirror right here. Actually, if I'm in the studio, I can actually put on the light. So I go from the outer edge to the bottom. And then you want to create shape because my lips are very narrow. If you don't want to then add a lot of color because I have a colored liner, then I can just use a colored gloss. If you want super matte, you can do that too. But that way you have a very soft line around the outside of the lip. And it really is, we are really a nation of lip readers. As Dana said, it's just easier to see people when you can see their mouth move. Mm -hmm. Really important for acting. So men often need to use a lip liner that's even a neutral brown tone to blend in with their natural lip color so that we really can see the mouth separate from the skin tone. So that is one really important feature. Giving it that definition so you can see somewhat an outline, but it's not overbearing. It's actually, yeah, it's very, very interesting because what you're doing is you're creating a shadow on the outside edge of the lip. It's a contour so that there's highest contrast between the lip edge and the cheek. And then it goes down into the lip, which is a lighter, slightly lighter color. And then you can even make a lighter color if you want to have the lower lip, you know, stick out. Then you highlight inside here. 
on the lower lip to make it bigger. But I really do have lizard lips, very, very thin. And then with the help of a pencil, they're somewhat normal looking. <laughs> At least as normal as mine get. So let me know when you're ready to reveal and we'll turn the recording back on. So one thing you wanna do in Miranda is just lift your screen up just a little so that we see the top of your head. There you go, perfect. Um, yeah, so what do you what do you want me to? Just whatever, uh, what do you guys think? She looks great, doesn't she? Yes. Yes. Thank yeah, you. I like your, I think your lip color is very subtle but pretty with your, the choices that you've made and you really good hair recovery out of the wig cap. Always an interesting thing the first time you've done it. Did yeah. you have something that you particularly felt was successful? Um, I, I, I thought that the lip liner and lip color was like pretty successful because I think this color is like really pretty, but also just subtle. Um, and it's also like, it's like not drying on my lips. So it's like, it feels good too. Um, and then I also think that the concealer um, or the highlight that I put under my eyes did a good job because like I have pretty bad under eyes um, with no makeup on. So I think that did um, the job pretty well. And also like the blush, it's like hard to tell in this lighting, but I see it. yeah, like it's, it's, it's nice. Yeah. You did the, the dry on top of your powder. Yeah. Yeah. When you put your concealer on, did you do the tap method? Yeah, I tapped it on. Okay, good, good. And you can do that with both, just, you know, be adventurous. You can do that with both the brush and the sponge. Right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Anybody? We'll go to Anastasia next. Opinion. Yeah, so I really like the, um, this makeup stuff and colors are great. Wor colors, colors are worth for me really well. I really like the um, pro pencil. The color is really nice and I really like it. So, but, and it, it was interesting for me that it has a lot of pigment, pigment, pigmentation. Right. right. So it was, you have to use a little bit and you can cover and you can highlight. And so it's, right. yeah, I really, yeah. And the lip color and um, this, the color is really good. This stuff. This is the one you. And it's really soft on lips, so it's. Really so the texture lips. of the makeup feels good yeah. on the lip, yeah. and you, that is one thing that they do talk about with the Ben Nye is that it's highly pigmented. So you would use a very very small amount. Like one foundation will do fifty makeups easily. Mm. So it's it a little does go a long way, and it that's hard to get used to because a lot of uh, contemporary makeup is not as pigmented and you end up putting a lot on to get a response. So that's kind of a, a good thing to notice. Uh, let's see. Um, Greenlee, you're gonna go after Ellie. I'll have Ellie go. And then Greenlee, you can chime in on her camera afterwards, okay? So we'll just do we'll just do Ellie first. Okay. I'm sorry. Okay. Um. So I did. I did the, let's turn that off. <laughs> okay. So I feel like what was successful for me. I liked. Like I also agree with you with the eyebrow pencil. I really liked that one. Interesting. It, like, Good. It was, like it went on like really well. And then also the lip liner. I feel like I like the lip liner. Like. Uh -huh. It was also smooth, and then I I actually liked the eyeliner the eyeliner pencil too, like I got I felt like I could do like a really subtle wing like really like kind mm -hmm. of almost smokier you know. So yeah, like soft. yeah, it really is really just it's not like a major swoop. It doesn't have to be a hard edge, you mm -hmm. know. When you use like I used a liquid or a felt pen. Mm -hmm. That's what it. I usually use too. And it's a but it is a much sharper line, and so this is softer and a little more forgiving or more daytime use. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Good things to sort of experiment with. Yes, definitely. And then Brinley, are you going to come in? Uh, here you go. Switcherooing. Uh, um, okay. I feel like I, 
I feel like I need to work with the makeup a little more because I'm just not loving my look I have on right now. I feel like I went a little too dark for the lips. I don't know. But I really like the foundation. I feel like it went on nicely. The blush, I uh, kind of put a little too much. I got too excited. But I, I like everything else, though. <laughs> You know, one thing that is that is difficult to get used to is if you're used to a really nude lip, yeah, almost any color is shocking to see. So once you put on the color and you become more accustomed to the color, then it, it is something that's necessary for camera and for stage work. When this whole thing of nude lip, if you went on stage like that, it would appear as though you had nothing below your nose. So it is, it's much more, um, Dramatic. Yeah, it's much more, and it's necessary for no, and, uh, for audience yeah, did, to hear you. Yeah, no, I did theater in high school, and every time I got my makeup done, I was like, oh my god. But no, yeah, I definitely like it. It's different, but I just have to get used to it. And it's a it's a whole you know it's a whole technique. Like I told Tyler, it's it's materials, it's tools, and then it's the application of using the tools with the material, and then actually applying it to your face. Like so many things to learn right up front. No, yeah. Great, excellent. Thanks, Brinley. Thank you. Sydney, you ready to go? Yeah. Um, I think my I'm like super natural, and usually I'd put a lot more, but um, I use my own foundation, so I don't know oh. if that has anything to do with it. Um, I really liked the powder, surprisingly, because I'm like super picky about powder. Uh -huh. but it didn't make my under eyes crease at all. And it was, I was really surprised by that, so. so it's really fine. Yeah, I really liked it a lot. Good, good. Well, I'm glad you found something to like because we all know it's an investment and Tyler hasn't had that experience, but it is an investment when you're buying makeup and it's like, man, I don't wanna buy that $30 powder and then hate it. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to tell until you actually are using it. So this way you get a lot of products that you can try and then you'll get used to trying them in different ways. So just like we said, you know, you can use a lighter hand to put it on, or maybe you're going to put it on with just the sponge and just kiss the face with it just a slight bit. So good job trying that. And I'm so glad everyone got their kit. So here's Tyler. He's racing around because he came late. There he is. Great. So tell us what you did, Tyler, because it's a first experience for him. It's like brand new. Absolutely brand new first experience doing this on my own. So my camera right now is really terrible and the lighting I'm right next to the window is awful. But um, first off, just I, I went through one of the uh, one of the three foundations that shows the olive tan. When I went through looking at the colors, um, can't really. Uh, can't tell from the the lighting, but um, when I went through and looked at the colors, it looks like they're they're very accurate, uh, very closely resembling the color of my skin. So uh, those I believe definitely work well. Um, I realized that I should probably find a way to clean off my eyebrows a little bit better, so that way I can. I found the occasional flake, and I wasn't very happy about that. So, but. I did go through the little technique you, sh uh, yeah. you showed me about going very lightly going up and then around the top kind of curving out. And after doing so, uh, seeing it through the mirror, it looked th there was a difference there. There was a bit more of um, um, like a definition. Yeah, than, that's you know. called, that's just a grooming look. Mm. And it's, so it's more intentional than just having your eyebrows go all different directions. The one thing that I really struggled with I thought I could draw very well, but apparently I'm not very good at drawing on my lips. I will say though, the, the color does work if I'm very, very light with it, if I don't use yeah. too much. Um, the same thing goes for the, the cream highlight, the, the ultra light. Um, I attempted to use that on the darker circles under my eyes and it, I think I used just enough, maybe a slight bit too much on my left eye, but my right eye, it kind of looked like I gave myself a, a pseudo black eye with white. So. <laughs> well, um, you're doing, you know what? Here's one thing that's very, very good is you're able to describe what you're seeing. Hmm. And the first step is actually to see what you've done. And that's very important is some, I have had students go through this class and it's the sixth week before I feel like they even see their face. 
So everyone's been very successful with seeing that and, and congratulations. I want to do one thing to show you to help with the lip. So one thing is try not to use your pencil like this because it's not drawing on. You can actually just drag the side of it and that might be easier to drag the side of the pencil instead of trying to create that point to go on the lip. So that's hard to, to pinpoint that little tiny line between the, the lip pigment and the skin pigment to, to actually draw like this. It, it's very tension producing. The other thing is I want to, to help you to anchor your arm onto a table. You can even anchor your hand here. And then when you're dragging, you're very smooth so that you have a very, a very still hand and stable. So you might want to practice with those kinds of things. And then dragging that is going to give you a better line than doing a, a point because it's just the material, you get more material on your face to do that. Noted. So I'd like everyone to try and find your best light to take your selfie and remember, let me see, where's my phone? Remember to create your eye line, right? Your, where your camera is, that you're looking at your eye line and not looking at your camera down here. So that when you're taking your selfie, you're looking up here, your eye is in line slightly so that you're really getting a good picture and play around with that a little bit. And then when you take it off, also take your naked face picture so that we have that. And you can send them both in for your um, corrective makeup. Okay, so let's let, just try and do that now so that you have all of your things together. I will make the worksheets. I will print them. And let's see. If, if you can come to the box office, I can drop them off up there and I can have them in individual baggies for you. And otherwise, Tyler, do you want me to send you some? Oh, no, you can print. Otherwise, so what I'll do is I'll just put six baggies together. And if you can come up to the box office tomorrow and pick them up, then you'll have them. So you have them for Wednesday when we do Glamour. And I want you to start working on Thin Face. Questions? Tyler? We should. Uh, You're done? Um the uh, the sheets that we need to print out, are they on the Canvas site or would you- Remember when we looked at the worksheets and determined the face shape? Yes. And I posted yours up there, the combination. Gotcha. So you'll have that on your site and you can fill that in. Got it. That's on the Canvas site. Okay, and then Anastasia, did you have a question? Yes, should we use different colors of pencil to draw? Yeah. Good question. Yeah. I mean, use colored pencils, don't use your makeup. So colored pencils are on your supply list. Mm -hmm. Let me just move that out of the way for a sec. I mean, you can even use these like just these, any kind of colored pencil. You just want, it's good if they can have a little bit of movement so that you have enough choices to create skin tones and liner colors and that kind of stuff. So you wanna use a colored pencil, not your makeup. The makeup tends to smear on the page and is not as accurate as a pencil can be, okay? So I can run some I'll, I'll make some copies of the makeup chart. Ellie and Brindley, do you think you can come up and get yours sometime tomorrow? Uh, sometime tomorrow, yeah. We can, my computer just died. Oh, Ellie's computer died. Um, yeah, we can make that work. So the box office is not where you came to pick up your kit. It's you can park on the upper lot and there's a little spot that says box office parking. And you just follow the signs. Sydney, did you find that pretty easy to follow the signs? Yeah, it was really easy to find. Okay, so just follow the signs to box office. They're there from 10 to 3. Okay, yeah, we could totally make that work tomorrow. So I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and package those up right now so that um, they're there for you first thing. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. Okay. So let's take your selfies and practice uh, writing down what you used if you don't have your worksheet so that we you can transcribe that directly to your character and also you should have your character, your makeup with you. So let's see. I was going to show you my corrective. Let's see. Does it matter if we use the front or back camera? I don't think so. Okay. So I just going to, I thought I had my worksheet in here. I do not. Huh, I must have moved it. So, you know, if you want to take a naked picture, like this of you, and then you take your corrective picture, right? And then we can see them both. All right, I will say goodbye and I'll get those into Ziploc bags for you so that you can come even in the rain and they'll stay dry. Perfect, thank you so much, have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. See you on Wednesday. Yeah, bye. Thank you.